Yes, here he is. Sorry, say, say hello to the fans. Hello, everybody. So, uh, first question. How did you get discovered in this whole thing, the music biz? What were you doing before this? Because, as I'm aware, you were only 15 when you hit the music scene. That's right. <laughs> but, the way I got discovered is, me and Justin, we got discovered together. So, we wrote a letter to a music company, and when they wrote us back, they said that we weren't right for their business. But they also sent our demo to L.A., which we're in, and that's where I got discovered, the wealth of us. And so, we were recording at Jobs Records Company, and they said, you know what, it'll be really good for you to take on your own solo career. And so that way you can get some group money, you can get your own money. And I said, alright, that's a good thing. And so ever since that, I've just been doing my own thing. Also with the group, you know, me and Justin, we've been doing this dynamic duo thing with the Eternities. But ever since that, I've just been doing my own single solo thing. That's right. And um, so you also are an actor because we have seen you and Justin in plenty of movies. Tell us about your acting career. Did you get discovered in that? Did you just decide to start acting? How did all that happen? Well, actually, I was just singing, and we were at a party, and, you know, when you were at a big party, you know, I think it was after the Grammy Awards, I went to it, I didn't win anything, but I did go to it, and we were just at a party, you know, everybody was talking, and I met this um, lady, and she came up to me, she said, you'd be perfect for a movie, and she wasn't very dramatic with it, she just said that you're, just the way you look, period, is a good way to put you in that movie, just the way you look, your good, good personality and your good look for the character, yeah, that's what I was trying to say, the character that we are, that we have you set up for is just a good, good everything, and so after that she says, says she wants me to star in the movie, and I said, alright, but also, we also, me and Justin, after I played in a few movies, we said, let's go on and off and do our own little movie thing. And so, we That's did. right, because you have the uh, Nelson production, and Justin has the Everett Entertainment thing, right? Yeah, that's right. And we said, let's go ahead and do our own little music thing, and so, a movie thing. And so, we did the abuser, and, and that's when we decided to do the comedy And thing. that was y'all's uh, first movie together, the abuser. Yeah, it was real good on the... And y'all got that sketch comedy show on NBC every Friday night, and we'll talk about that later. And, um, so what was the name of your first movie? The Well, the name of my first movie was a movie called Runaway, and it was about this boy that really didn't like his life, and he had many things happen in his life. Right, I've seen it. It's, it's pretty good, and it did pretty good in the box office, too. Yeah, and it had uh, just a whole lot of drama and motion in it and that's why she said I was good for the part because at the time I was acting silly I wasn't being dramatic but you know y'all know how I am I like to play around joke around sometimes but she yeah and so I was acting dramatic and shit that's when she said you'd be perfect part run away and then it was about this boy that runs away from home realizes a lot of stuff on the street realizes a lot of stuff uh that he thought would be glam glamorous and the fancy life and everything, he realizes that it's not what it really is. It's not what it really seems. So he comes back home. And by that time, his mom is upset with him. But his mom does accept him back. And it's a real heartwarming, heart wrenching story. And, and that's just it. When we first started, that was my very first movie. And after, before the abuser. Right, because a lot of your fans have seen it. Now, I remember that this Eternities group you guys had was a threesome. Now, what happened to that? You and Justin are doing a good job now running it, but there was Braxton in it. And now, that that was a funny kid, guy, because, <laughs> you know, he was young, so we all called kids. But he was funny, you know. He'd get up on stage, he'd even tell jokes with y'all. That's why, because probably when you talk about him, I'm going to be laughing, too, because I'll think of those jokes he told. He was funny. What happened to him? Did he quit? Did he just say, I'd like to do something else? Tell us about that. Well, you're exactly right. He quit and he went off and he said that once he finished high school that he wanted to major in business and technology, in the technology so business. he just kind of got tired of all this famous show business stuff. He said, like, it, what was it like, was it, was it right for him or something, or he just would rather do the technology? 
he said that he liked it, and he said that he he didn't mind it, but he his heart is in business and his heart is in technology and making things. He always wants to make new future things, you know. So if you see anything like new that you see in magazine, this thing just came out, everybody wants to buy it. They might just have his company name on it. And I remember um, Justin telling me the story about it. He said that he called him and told him that um, that he was going to quit the group and so Justin told me, and this was a little bit after we done a few things with the group, an uh, album and everything, and he said that he was going to quit the group, and he told Justin that he wanted to do this, and just said, will you, he asked Justin, will you um, be a signer for his name, because once he finished high school, he has to go to college, and when he gets his business, there's a certain process that you have to go through, so he asked Justin that, and he said that, and he asked him could he sign sign it for him and he says yeah I signed it for him and so ever since then we haven't really heard from him but another funny thing is that was pretty much where we got our comedy sketch from because as you said before he was a funny guy and right. so he told all those jokes yeah. on stage and, and so we like, got a lot like of during when y'all break for intermission or something he'd tell jokes and he was funny. yeah so we got a lot of jokes from him I mean, not plagiarism, but right, of course. we got a lot of, you know, funny things from him and how he acted, should I say. And a lot of things he would always say, Maine, and just funny, just hilarious stuff, you know. And so, I mean... Yeah, that's the famous even though, Hey, Maine thing. <laughs> yeah, even though he was cool, sketch. even though he was cool, we still, you know, we hanged out, but he was funny. So we got that from him and we used it in our comedy sketch because we thought it'd be good and like a memory of him but in a funny way because you know our fun, our show was funny and so that's how and that's another reason why um, our third season which I'm glad to announce is a winning season yeah uh, yeah that's right it is the I watched the Emmys and um, I, I, I did see that in Laughing Skits season 3 won an Emmy and uh, isn't uh, and I we know season one to season two is already out on DVD and and I think season three is out on DVD now and if you look it'll say Emmy Award winning season. Now I must ask you, how did you get all these characters? Because <laughs> it is funny the show. You know, Opal Boots and Cream comes out and you made Cream even nasty, you guys and not nasty shall I say, but funny. You know, people can't really say it or they're gonna get laughed at. And just I must know where did all the characters come from? Where where did all this whole concept of season three and I and I also um, remember you you told me a little bit before this interview you can you want to continue keeping the characters because we know we saw the last episode of the uh, um, laughing skit show Opal and Mr Mays got married and uh, but you said you did want to keep the characters but just how'd you get the characters and everything and how'd it come about well. Even though we wanted to keep the characters, the way we got the characters is just through life, through school, and not that any of them are nasty. They have very good personalities. We just, we just to seen, make it funnier. You, we seen just say dramatic. Yeah. yeah, we see, we saw dramatic things that they did, and um, like I mean, they're human and they're they're real cool. I'm not saying that they're bad. So they were teachers at your school, some of them. But you turned them into funny people because I tell you that the that the way you know they cream people. That Opal goes boop and Ruby talks real fast. All those characters and everything. It's just funny. Yeah, and we wasn't trying to be disrespectful, but it was. But the things that we saw, that the way they acted, we made it dramatic because there was this one time that Justin saw. Opal's dress fly up. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was funny. That was real funny. Yeah. And just so her dress blew up. Was it the wind? Yeah. The wind. The wind blew her dress up, and she said, "Ooh, it's windy today, isn't it?" <laughs> and so, and so, uh, when that happened, we just thought of this whole concept and made. He had that southern accent. He came right and on the, the spot. Yeah. And the and so, Yeah. And so he had that southern accent. So we came and we made it into a funny mm -hmm. thing that people always see every day, but just more dramatic. And we added the cream because I said, I bet you they both have cream. And then we made up the color. Yeah. And they 
cream each other. Because when people say, I'm going to cream you, it usually means they're going to beat you. But now, folks, you can't say that anymore because people think you're just being funny and copying off the show. So, yeah, we just thought of that whole concept of things that they did and the way they acted. I mean, they're human, like I said before. I'm going to keep saying that. They act regular. They're real cool people. But it, we just made their acts dramatic. I mean, because it was funny. But... But it it was funny, so we made their acts dramatic. But it wasn't. We weren't trying to be disrespectful when we did it. Now, how did all the? I know now you said um, how all these characters came out. You know, uh, Mr. May's Opal. How did the bus lady? Because you know, a bus the bus lady come about an imaginary friend and Ruby talking fast. This talking fast woman, and just how. Uh, and I'll and I'll ask you that after I you answer this. I was going to ask you how'd you get all these stars from from the past to play them, but first just tell us, how did the other characters come about? Where'd you get those ideas? Well, I'm gonna start with Bus Lady, because it's an easier story. <laughs> when when we met Bus Lady, we met her at Fuddruckers. And so she was a bus lady, and y'all decided, y'all didn't know her name, but she was bussing the tables, so she was a bus lady, so y'all kept it at Bus Lady. Exa exactly, we never learned her name, so we called her Bus Lady. She was a bus lady. Exactly, and so, she came up to us one day, and um, she just she asked me. She just said, "Can I help you uh, squirt some mustard?" I said, "No." What was the, so the mustard was stuck, I suppose. Yes, and so after that, we walked to the tables and we just saw her and just walking around, and we noticed that her lips were kind of big. <laughs> That's where the big lip thing came from. <laughs> yeah, so we just made it dramatic and, like yeah. I said, abstract. Right. And we, uh, and we noticed that her lips were big, and we, and we noticed that she was saying, mm-hmm, for no reason. <laughs> and so we said, Bobby was probably talking to her, and we just came up with that name out of nowhere. And, and uh, said, Justin, uh, said, I, he said that she was probably talking to him, was kidding around and said, I bet she's talking to an imaginary friend when she says, mm-hmm, since there was no one there. Yeah, that's what we said. Uh, and... Like I that's like like I said, you're right. So uh, like I said, um, that's what we said together, and we were laughing about it. And so she came over to the table, and she asked us, "Do we have any dates?" And, and <laughs> was she trying to get get in with y'all? <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> but um, she just said, "I saw your date dates left," because we just sent by two girls. We didn't like. Oh, them. and she supposed that they were your dates. Okay. Yeah, we didn't like them or anything. But she just said, "I saw your dates left, and I'm sorry." And that um, she said maybe y'all get some next time, and she and she just walked away with, and we just that's what actually when we noticed she had big lips, she walked away, <laughs> and she looked kind of funny walking away. So, and um, this this is a very good sketch comedy show. It wasn't doing so good when it first started out because, but now everyone loves these characters. So, are, do Flutter? I have to ask about Flutter and Marlin, that bird and Beatnik. Do y'all plan on having them come back? Because they did come back in the second season. Do y'all plan on them having come back, or you just don't know? Well, actually, I'm not going to make any final decisions because it's up to me and Justin. Oh, cool. And our company. Y'all created the show. Exactly, and our company. But I will say this. We do plan for them to come back. If not in the fourth or fifth or sixth season, maybe in the very last season. I'm not saying the seventh season season will be our last season, but I'm you saying, never know. Yeah, I'm just saying the last season, whatever number it is, that we're gonna have them all together and it's gonna be funnier than ever. But yeah, we somewhat plan for them to come back. We haven't made a final decision yet, so y'all watch out for that. Mm hmm So you came up with the idea for the show were you just like saying, hey, we need a new sketch comedy show, or just how did that happen? Actually, we were just being ourselves. We were just hanging out, and we was laughing together, and we thought of a whole bunch. You know, we said one day, we said one day we should make a show about all these, because all these are funny, and people think they're funny, and people think we're funny. People thought a lot of things about us, but one thing they thought about us was we're funny, and we're very crazy when we get together. I mean, they because might, the show is crazy. <laughs> yeah, they might have not said it out loud, but... That's what they pretty much said. You know, and what I found, yeah, what I found out in life is that you have to take words. And and I know I'm trying not to get off subject, but let me just say this: I found out in life you have to take words, and you have to read between the lines, and not just read between lines, but try to understand where uh, haters or 
players or people that try to put you down where they're coming from because they might just like what you're doing and never say it out loud. They're just trying to disguise it and hate on you because of the fact that you're doing something good. But anyway, like I was saying, um, yeah, we were just laughing and talking one day, you know, like teenagers and kids do. And we just came up with this whole concept that we should have a show that is really funny for these people. You know what I mean, because they thought we were funny and to have this show so we can make money and have this show so people can laugh and bring joy to people's faces and we just like to be entertainers and we always want to be actors and singers and stuff so we said that we should uh, have this comedy sketch even if we never actually be in a real movie but we have been in real movies thanks to um, Justin Everett Enterprise and Nelson's Productions and all these things but even if we didn't have those things we said we want to show so that was one of our first things that we really did with with creating it and thinking it up so uh, yes. so um I must ask because you and Justin have been friends for a while how did you two meet? well we met in choir uh, he was talking to people that he thought he was his was it in school? yes it was in school in a choir class and it was I think it was the first or second or third day like uh, high school, junior high? It was in junior high. Wow, you guys go way back then. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like four wheels on a cat line, but, <laughs> but, um, but we said that, um, I said that your friends, you know, your so-called friends are talking about you over there, because I overheard them talking. And even before that, I was looking at his paper, because we were writing stuff down on the board, and he said that, why are you looking at my paper? I said, I need it, I need it, man. You know, I need to see your paper, right? And he said, why? Well, I said, I just need to see it. <laughs> I wasn't going to admit that I couldn't see very good. I need, I wear glasses. I mean, I can you see. You wear sometimes glasses. Yeah. For like reasons. Yeah. I can see, but, you know, I can see far distances. So, uh, when they said that, they said that I needed glasses, eventually, but I said, I couldn't see it, man, I need to see what you're doing, right? Mm -hmm. And so, I mean, you know, nothing's wrong with my eyesight, I can see good, but, you know, just details and stuff, like, is that an N or an M? So anyway, I said, I need to see your paper. And so that was just start of it. And then a few days later, that's when I said, you know, your friends are talking about you over there. And he said, no, I didn't know that. And so we just started talking and talking about how he likes to sing and act and how I like to sing and act mm -hmm. and all these things. So we said, you know, we have a lot in common. And after that, it just, the rest fell in place. So, um, <clears throat> who musically influenced you to do music? Like, were there certain people that influenced you? Are there favorite singers? Tell us about that. Well, I have a lot of people that influenced me in my life and music. Um, my dad and my mom and the, one of the music people, like you were saying, and the musicians um, is Usher and Chris Brown. And I like following them and R. Kelly and them, mainly Usher, but because he was real young and hip hop and all that. But like I was saying, um, most of my family and my parents and my mom and people, everywhere I went, people told me, oh, you can sing, you sound good, you got a good voice, and all of this. So I just went off of what they said, not just that I didn't know I didn't have a good voice, and so they said it because I knew that. I've always thought that I could sing, even when I was younger, and I really couldn't sing, to tell you the truth. <laughs> uh, I would go outside, and I would just start dancing and singing and making up songs out of nowhere you know just to get my voice better and because I really wanted to sing that's always been a desire of my heart so that's pretty much where I get my inspiration from and from any kind of music that I hear and from any kind of music even rap because I know a lot of people put down rap especially a lot of grown-ups they say they don't like it I necessarily don't like the lyrics but if you hear the story of what they're trying to tell not all of it is bad. Because, like, there's all kinds. You have your, they have even, like, Christian rap and just regular rap. They got all kinds of rap. Exactly. Now, I will admit that some of the words are explicit and some of the words yeah, are... A little inappropriate. Yeah, inappropriate and things like that. But, especially gospel rap, it has a good message. Right. And some, if you listen to some of the rap without the cuss words and without the profanity and all that, um... It still sounds good. 
yeah, and you understand the lyrics, you can see where they're coming from, because some people actually do live like that day by day, but at the same time, I don't support it. But like I was saying before, not to get off the subject, you know, I'm just being real, you know, but like, not to get off the subject, um, anything that I listen to expires me, any kind of music that sounds good, any kind of music that, even operas, operas, and, <laughs> I mean, you laugh at it and people think it's funny, I mean, I'm not saying that it's not, because when you first say it, it is funny, I will admit that, but operas and things like that, even that can be beautiful, even that can be used in hip-hop, R&B, even that really can, because if you even hear a violin in music or hip-hop or an R&B, you really can get something from that. So you listen to all kinds then, not just one type. Exactly. And, um, let's see, I was also going to ask you, do you have a girlfriend, do you plan to, do you, do you have a girlfriend, do you plan to get married, and do you plan to have kids, do you plan to settle down, stuff like that? Eventually in my life I do plan to settle down, but at the and same time, married. yeah, and get married, but I don't plan to, um, quit my career, of course, of course. And you still, do you want to have kids? Yes, I want to have three kids at the most. Mm -hmm. Um, I do have a girlfriend, my long life sweetheart, and love is Raven. Uh. And don't get sad, girls, don't worry. Um, girls, I, keep your hands off. <laughs> yeah, but don't worry at the same time. You don't want to see y'all shaking your booties at him. <laughs> he got someone to do that, just kidding. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, I, I love women. I, I mean, I'm not going to cheat on my girlfriend, but at the same time, I will talk to you and I will... I will treat you like a queen because I love all women. All women are queens. I mean, God made Adam and Eve, and so you're supposed to treat women like that. But there's a p there's there's certain ways that I look at it. I mean, uh, like I said before, I love all of you. I love all my fans, my fan girls, my fan boys, whatever. But all, let me tell you this: there's a way that you have to look at it. When I'm on stage. When I'm on stage, that's for show. With the eternities. Yeah, and with stuff the like eternities that. and with my solo and with my tours and with the show. That's for show. Like I was saying, um, it's just for show and it's not really serious because when you're in love with someone, and you say you love with someone, it's a big difference. And I'm not saying I don't love you girls. I'm not saying that... Uh, you love all your friends equally, right? Yeah, and I'm not saying that. But there's a difference between, oh, this is my wife, and, oh, this is a fan. You know, it's a big right, difference, right. you know. I understand. You know, or, or this is my girlfriend, and this is my friend. But yes, I plan to marry, exactly, Raven, like I was talking about, and I plan to settle down with her. But if that doesn't happen, I do plan to marry and do uh -huh. settle down. And um, you are also doing stuff on, uh, like you're doing lots of shows, like musicals and stuff like that. In fact, actually, um, you did a tour last year during your solo career. Last year, you did a world tour. You went all over the world. Uh, you went to different countries. You toured the the this country, stuff like that. So tell us about your tour. Well. Uh, my tour was very fun. I loved it. I loved just hanging around people and and showing and doing what I do best. Not a bad way to stay in shape. <laughs> yeah, and showing and doing what I do best and bringing out the liveness and the stage and just bringing the motion and everything. Because all my songs are, they're not just a certain band of songs. I have gospel songs, Christian songs, hip-hop songs, rap songs. I have all of it. And, I mean, and... I try to bring that out on stage, emotion and feeling and excitement, love, sadness, drama, praise, all of that. I try to bring it out on stage, and that's what I really loved about the tour so much excitement and so much power in it. So you enjoy this whole life, you know, your celebrity life, being an actor, singer, uh, being with Justin, because I have, I did see y'all's um, Christmas special on ABC. It was it it was live from the Rockefeller Center in New York, and um, it was pretty good. And I noticed what y'all do during y'all's concerts. You both sing your Eternity songs, then y'all will split up. Justin will sing some songs by himself, and Justin always sings that song at every concert, that gospel song, How Great Thou Art. And I would just like to say that is beautiful. Everyone loves it, and you always sing songs by yourself. Y'all always split up. I love how y'all do that because everyone both of you just get attention equally. But just tell us just stuff like that. Well, we we want to keep our friendship and we want to stay cool, you know. 
And just like I have my solo thing, he has a solo thing. But we also have this group thing, you know. And, and we want to keep that going. Yeah. yeah. So, so when we do that, is to is to build the 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 stage and to build the and to show people that y'all can by yourself can also sing. Yeah, and to show the liveliness of both of us. I mean, and the calmness of like me when I'm singing "Take My Breath Away" and so like him when he's singing "How Great yeah. There Are" and the liveliness of when he's singing his praise songs and when I'm singing songs like "Twisted" and I mean songs like that. If you've heard them before, and, and that's I know that's a new one I mentioned, but. Uh, you know, just live songs and also calm songs that shows both of the sides of how we are and the things that we do to to make our concerts better and our tours better. And that's why we try to split up. So, um, you and Justin are the eternities and also just sometimes even go by just playing Sir Isaac and Justin. Do you guys have a tour planned out? Like, are you guys just going to tour the country, go in the world? Because I know uh, you guys plan to still be, to stay in the country and tour the, this country. Just tell us about if y'all do have a tour coming up or something like that. We have several tours coming up, and you know, our new hit single, Love, and we also that have... That went gold, didn't it? it? It went a gold record. How about that? Yes, it went gold, and because we're so happy, that's what we plan to do. We plan to tour, and not just in the country, like you were talking about, out of the country. I mean, all around the countries, uh, countries, and all around the world, and not just not just certain places, you know. We plan to go everywhere with it, bring our music to different heights and to different levels of excitement and different levels of um, entertainment because, like you said, we're the music of tomorrow and we want to try to bring that 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 new beat, that today. new sound, yeah, today, uh, so we can feel a new, new emotion and a new something that people never felt before, you know, bring it forward, you know, new heights of music because we're trying to raise the old school music with the new school music and a little bit of feeling, put in both of them, and that's why our beats are so awkward. People ask us, what's with your beats sometimes, and that's why they're so awkward because of the fact that we're trying to bring a new emotion to the hip-hop industry, to the R&B industry and the pop industry, you know, all these industries that we do, because we do more, like I said, we do more than one kind of music, um, type of music, and we're trying to bring that new height to all the levels of music so we can, you know, become more professionally and we can come more, become more uh, industry-wise. Mm -hmm. Well, that's great to know. And, um... I'm sure everyone will love the tour, and you guys are even talking about doing a concert tour movie. Like, it's a movie that's going to follow your whole tour. It's going to take show what's going on backstage, what's going on just during free time, hang out when you guys aren't doing all this. It's going to show the performances, and, and I think it's going to be pretty good. I saw on TV it's coming soon to theaters, and I, I want to go see it. So, uh, tell us about it. Well, it's going to be a very good movie, I can tell you that. And... Some, I mean, we're just ourselves, you know, the, we want to be real with our friends. We want to tell our fans that we're... Show we are, them what you guys do just backstage and stuff like that. Yeah, that we are humans, too, because people think that stars are, you know, fake and, and everything. But we started out as humans, and we still are humans. You know, everybody's a human. I mean, you can't help it. That's our species. You know, you can't change yourself, you know. We're not like that. You know, we're not uh, something that you can't look up to. I'm, we're trying to show that we are real people we make mistakes we're not perfect yeah we yeah we have good figures yeah we have good voices yeah we can dance yeah we can do this yeah we can be on video yeah we have cool backgrounds yeah we've been in movies but you know to show the real side of us you know when we're laughing and talking and let me tell you something about this movie some people say and some people say that when when actors do stuff like that, like this interview, it's just a setup to blah 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 or whatever, you know, just rumors or whatever, you know, just stuff that people think. But let me tell you this: that we're trying to be real on this movie. We're not going to be faking or shaking or none of that. We're just going to be ourselves. And you say say that like interviews and stuff. They say that they're setups to to either help you in your career or make you bad in your career, whichever one. But we're telling you, we're just going to be real. We're going to talk about real stuff, 
whatever. We're going to talk about it. The stuff that we talk about every day, you know, everything. So you can just see how psoriasis can just act in real life, you know. So it won't just be something fake to y'all or think that we're trying to be unrealistic. Right. right. So um, everyone's probably going to go see the movie. And um, you guys have been on a lot of magazine covers, I've noticed. You're, lot, you're in lots of kids' magazine, stuff like that. And um, let's just get off the uh, celebrity life subject. What do you personally like to do in your free time? Do you just like to watch TV? Do you just love to be you and get away from all this and stuff like that? Because I know it can be probably stressing to being a big star with Justin and all. Just What do you like to do when you're not, uh, you know, singing with Justin or doing a movie or doing the celebrity life? Well, in my spare time, I'm like everybody else. I like to watch TV, play video games, sing, dance. Uh, I just like to think of new things. I like to write. I really like to write. Um, Y'all probably seen my book, uh, um, DK, my DK stories. You probably. Uh, oh yeah, I, I've read that. That was pretty good. And you probably read some of my books. It that actually are, was a bestseller. Yeah. Yeah, and you ex you probably heard read some of my books that are coming out, and that's what I like to do in my spare time. I like to write and think, and I'm I'm a thinker. I like to think and plan out things and. And, and go places, you know, just do stuff with my spare time, spend my money, you know, <laughs> pray. And most of all, number one, I like to praise God. I'm of a course. church man. My religion is very important to me. That I, always comes I, I be, Yes, thank you. I believe in God, and I believe in Jesus Christ is the way. And if, if I can get off subject for a little bit, let me tell everybody that will listen yes, to this please, please. and that will ever listen to this. Jesus Christ is the way to go. I will tell you that right now. I don't care what yes. you say. I don't care how bad you hate me for it. Jesus Christ is the way. I'm not yes. trying to force my religion onto anybody because I can't do that legally. <laughs> I, can't, I can't force my religion on anybody. But all the Christians out yeah. there are listening. Yeah, and all the Christians. Yeah. yeah, and all the people that want to know God, I'm telling you too, He is good for you and He will help. And anyway... I got off the subject a little bit, but like I was saying, everybody, um, that in my spare time I got off a, I got off a subject, and I I know that that you know, but you know we're being real, we're being real, we're talking to each other. But like I said, we got off a subject, so let's get back on subject, to get back on point. In my spare time, I just play games, like I said, write, think, pray. Uh, watch go to TV, church, go to church. yeah, watch, watch TV, I, and sometimes I actually do go out and buy stuff, but I'm in a disguise, people, y'all would never notice me, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, you might notice me, you might not, but not, not most of the time I'm praying that it's not, <laughs> so anyway, uh, yeah, I just go out and spend money, and I just talk, and I, and let me tell you something that I do that people don't really know about me, every month, churches write, I mean, all during the month, churches write, every single month, they just write a letter to me. Uh, they need the money, whatever their situation is, whatever their problem is, whatever they need, you know. Kind of like first Sunday. <laughs> yeah, kind of like it, but we no, don't, really. but we don't steal the money, yeah, you, you know, nothing. you know, you know, we're not, we not con convicts, we're not crazy, you know. Yeah. But that was a good reason, I will say that, but at the same time, we're not crazy. But no, what we do is we give the church money. Every month they I put it in a hat and we just draw and I give the money to that church. You're all yeah, offering my ten percent to whatever they need, if they need a new building. I mean, whatever they wrote in the letter. And it's for a good cause. It's not just to help the rich church get richer, because if you're a rich church, then of course you can always have more money. It's always a good thing. But if you're a rich church, you don't need it as mm -hmm. such as a church that would say is being built or being developed or need more things to do with the children or whatever. And um, I really like children and things like that. I'll tell you that now. So most of the time that when they write about children and they need a better program for the youth, I will give the money to them. Or if they write something like uh, to build their church or build a youth group, I will give them the money because youth are the future. And uh -huh. and it's not just because they wrote youth in their sentence. They can't, you know, I'm not I'm not selfish or picky. I just pick the best cause. It, it doesn't have to be youth. It could very well be they need a new church. They need 
of some repairment. They could very well be that, but I'm just saying that I love the youth. That's all I'm saying. And you're a very generous man. Like uh, you and Justin are always donating stuff to charities all the time. You always see on the uh, Hollywood celebrity shows you, the, the eternities are always donating stuff, and that's good. And um, and I know you donated a lot. You donate. Y'all donated to the Cancer Society to everything. And um, since since people know about that, now I'm going to ask you something that's really going to get in touch with your feelings. About two months ago, y'all's friend, Aaron Stanton, now y'all dropped him, but he called you a faggot. And everyone heard about it on TV. On the, It was on Hollywood Extra. And, and now people didn't really get to see, hear how you felt about it. Now they are. Listeners, you're going to get to hear how Sir Isaac feels about that and how he just feels about Aaron, what what he did to him. So just how did that make you feel when Aaron Stanton called you a, a faggot? Well, you know, it's hard that you brought that up because, like you said, it is in touch of my feelings. But, you know, I'm a God-fearing man. I'm not going to let anything stop me. I'm not going to let anything get me down. But, you know, we're human, like I said. So when we first found out, when I first found out, I was mad. And I was distraught because I thought that my friend, you know, he could say something so harsh to me. He could do things so harsh to me, and I really wanted to hurt him at the time. But because he was getting jealous of you, because you were a big star now. Yeah, and and I promised him that I would take him all the way, and that's the only way that he even was getting paid. Believe it or not, I'm not trying to start anything. Don't try to uh, say something I didn't say. Let me tell you that right now, because people have a real bad of doing that. But I will say this: that we were the ones paying him. And we were just doing stuff for him. That's the only way that he was able to pretty much live because we were being nice to him. But you know what? When he said that, it hurt me because I thought and he was real. And you even uh, pressed charges against him, and that's what he deserved. I thought I thought he was real, and I thought he was our friend. So you know what? I got mad, and yes, I pressed pressed charges against him for false everything. You know, for false witness. Even though he's a title to his pitch. For just being rude and yeah. saying that. Yeah. And even though he's taught unnecessary. Even though he's a title to his opinion and things like that. There's just certain things. No, there was no reason for to say that. Yeah, it was just. And a, he he didn't even apologize, did he? No, it was a certain place and it was a certain time and he spread it all over news. So that's pretty much false advertisement. That's what we sued him for. We didn't sue him for, you know, just saying that. And it was rude. I'm not saying that it was right. It was but you, he, I just said he didn't apologize. But you did make him get on TV or the jury court, Supreme Court made him get on TV and uh, give a public apology to you and me. Yes. Uh, uh, Justin. Yes, that's what we did. We said, we said, uh, we apologized, and we made him get on TV and apologize, but we didn't sue him because of the fact that he called us that, and it was rude, though. I'm not saying that it was right, because it was very rude. Oh, he called, or he called you that, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not saying that it was right. I'm saying it was rude, but I'm saying, uh, um, that, that, um, yeah, we, I made him get on TV, and... Justin was there too. That's why I keep saying we, because he was there through it all. He's a he's a good friend. I, I mean, I respect him to the highest level. I will try to be there for so, him yeah, as he best saw I can. Him too, yeah. So, so anyway, yes, we made him get on TV and we made him apologize. And that's just to let you people know that don't mess with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, I think I we um, we're almost done here. Asking because I'm sure all the fans listening uh, have really gotten to know you more and stuff, and they know a little bit more about your life. And um, you you've got this uh, dancing thing called gifted and talented. It's like a camp thing with kids. You do um, you know they dance and stuff, and uh, you teach them. Uh, and I guess tell us about that. Well, like I said before, I love youth. I love children. Um, I know children are hard to take care of because people say, if you love children so much, why do you say they get on your nerves? Like, if people ask questions like, excuse me, I'm trying to keep my burps inside. <laughs> Sorry, people. I'm a human. <laughs> people burp. <laughs> so anyway, um, they said that uh, they ask me because they've seen a few of my videos with the children and how I be talking to them sometimes and I don't be using vulgar language or anything like that but I just get mad everybody gets frustrated okay. and they say they say well then if you love children so much why do you talk to them well why do you do that because you have to instill something in them to make them right and not just that 
And um, I didn't say it was hard dealing with children. I said I love children. It's a big difference. I didn't say that um, I'm going to be the perfect child, take care of person. I didn't say that. I just said that I love them and I will do anything to try to help them. And it's good to instill goodness within them and good things. God said that um, in the Bible it says that put things that put thing in place God in them in place things in them and they will believe it all the days of their lives they see us do things and that's what they do but anyway let me tell you more about the group that was just my opinion about how I started the group because I love children and I've always wanted children to have opportunity to dance and sing and do what they like to do and so I just take them on places we go places last year we were at the BT Awards we were at the gospel explosion all, th all kinds of things. We went to a football game and performed at halftime. It was a Super Bowl, actually. And that's what I'm trying to work to get them to do again. We did that the first year because we had a lot of sponsors and a lot of people coming in. But now it's off of my money and off the parents' money. And I'm trying to do that. But And, and it's not just dancing. It's not just about dancing. We have points that we give to the kids. And we hang it up on the wall. And they can do it. From, from very young to very really old because you can even if you enjoy it so much that when you're old, too old to dance and you say well I still want to be in it um, I'm getting off the subject a little bit but still you know and you still want to be in it you can grow up and you can uh, we have a class to, of how to teach it and how to be a teacher or how to be a parent of it and so But like I said before, um, we have a college thing, like I was saying, um, we have a college thing going on with the children, and, and, I mean, what children, I could, could call them adults, when they get older and they can learn how to teach the class, if they don't want to leave, because, you know, it's so hard to stray from, from something that you have so much fun, mm -hmm. we go to Hollywood, and, you know, we do, we do it up big, we do it up real, so, and, it's so hard to stray away from something that people really like and they love and is installed in them. So we have a class to teach them how to be helpers or designers. Because, you know, we have to have people to design the clothes. We have to have people to help teach the dance. I can't do it all. We have to have people to count the money. We have to have, you know, all this stuff. And so um, I try. that's what I try to do. And we don't just, don't just uh, go dancing. They earn points, and when they get, especially in the teenage group, I especially I send because I think the teenagers are more mature. I send the teenagers off, and that's mainly who you see at the performances. You really don't see the kids, but I do take them certain places. I mean, we go on fun trips. But anyway, like I was saying, they build up points and they build up uh, levels um, uh, in their classroom, and it follows them all the way until they get to the, you know. So they get to the scholarship class, and the scholarship class is from the high school, from the uh, sophomores and the and the uh, from the freshmen. That's what I'm trying to say. Freshmen, sophomores next. You know. Anyway, from all the way down from the freshmen all the way up to the you know seniors is scholarship year, and whoever has the most points or level or goodness that they've done and dancing and dancing act all of that we count all of that dancing attitude professionalism uh pictures all of that everything that they've done we count it and we add it to points and whoever has the most we get a scholarship and then we even give out sometimes we just give out scholarships we say okay you have the most we're going to give you a scholarship but you're really good at this so we're going to give you a scholarship you know and they can go to any college if they don't want to go to the school that we have for them but that's what's going on with that, and I want to even take them to Hollywood, Broadway uh, stage, and to do a few of my plays, and not just not just them, but some more actors and things like that. Ladies and gentlemen that are listening, I think we've about covered the whole interview. I hope you've really gotten to know Sir Isaac more and more and stuff like that, gotten to learn more about him, and. Um, just stay fans of theirs, um, stay fans of the Eternities and just his, and keep on their music. They need your support, and they thank you for supporting them. And uh, they continue to, they're going to continue to do this. And um, here's Sir Isaac, he is going to sing Twisted, and it's off of his uh, not yet released album.
And here he is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah. Let me be real with y'all.